here's a couple of handy tips while you're setting up your dark room. Uh, so I've got first thing I did, I boosted my developer up just so I wouldn't have to reach or lean over quite as much. Even though my sink's about the right height, I just boosted up my developer tray by putting another tray upside down behind it. When you're printing, you're usually printing for several hours, so a little more height on your developer really helps. Okay, stop that, fix over the fixed tray. I've just got a piece of glass I always put up there, which makes it a lot simpler for when I finish a test strip or looking at a print. I can flip it up on the glass and take a look at it. That really makes it where you can see your images while you're working on them. Try those two suggestions when, when you're setting up just to make things go a little easier in your film darker. I'm careful to keep plenty of tongs, one one for each each tray, and I'm not I'm making sure the developer tongs don't get over to the stop bath. The stop bath is probably less a concern, but they don't go to the fixture the fixture then. So all the tongs just stay in their chemistry. Obviously, the stop bath kills the developer, so I don't want anything going back. So all, all the chemistry's got to come this way, and they all get their own tongs. Every dark room's got two sides, a wet side, where all the chemistry is, and then a dry side. And of course, when you're working on the wet side, occasionally you'll get fingers in the developer and the little print out, especially when you're printing reasonably sized prints that can't be handled just with tongs. So when you come up the wet side, you've got to make sure your hands are absolutely dry for the dry side. You just need lots of paper towels and real towels that have been washed. Wet side, dry side, just to maintain darkroom discipline. So I've got a big flat shelf under my enlarging table just to put paper on. Like every photographer, I've got too much stuff in my dark room, but there's no room for a 20 by 24 box of paper up here. So I just built a nice place to feed the paper right into the enlarging process, which makes things run just a little bit easier. I'm actually going to draw the image. I'm going to put down, I printed on uh, Ilford Multigrade and just sketch the image. And I'll make a few notes, so F16 at 47, go, and then edge burn, dodge flame. Burn gyro, and that'll give me a place to start if and when I ever print it again. At least got a few notes. I've got metal negative carriers, but I came back and made paper ones out of foam core and acid free board just because I know this cannot scratch a negative because it's softer than the negatives. And it certainly, I can cut them out as big as I need them. Even on 35 millimeter, I've made my own negative carriers just out of acid-free board, just just so I make sure they absolutely will not scratch one of my negatives. Here's my little self-published book on Blurb.com. It's written to be simple and useful like a crescent wrench. Anybody can pick it up and go right to work because it's so easy and apparent to use. Uh, for anybody making two-dimensional images, whether you're using film or digital, I think it's a very helpful book. 30 or 40 bucks in paper, but you can get the electronic version for $1.99, which is a real deal.